What's up, guys? I'm EJ. I'm joined by Shamari and Kendall. And thank you all for checking out this edition of our The Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode recap and review discussion. Uh, guys, this is obviously a really exciting venture. Of course, we did our WandaVision episode recap and reviews. We reviewed all nine episodes of that show. That is on our YouTube channel, Generation Media. Make sure you guys check that out if you haven't already. And now with uh, The Falcon and Winter Soldier dropping this weekend, we're back every week, every Friday recording our falcon and winter soldier episode recap so i'm really excited to be doing this and guys we got the first episode new world order first impressions what did you guys think i'll start with sharon first uh yeah so we had the first episode uh i was very impressed i was very impressed with the first episode um i would say it pretty much met my expectations right so we get introduced to sam where he's at now to do the bucky you see where he's at now we get a lot of action um uh, particularly with Sam, a lot of action with Sam, uh, especially in that uh, in that beginning uh, scene, which was awesome. I thought it was fantastic, honestly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, honestly, it met my expectations. A lot of emotional moments, uh, too. Um, uh, you know, especially particularly that moment with uh, uh, with Bucky and the guy, uh, the guy's son that he killed, apparently. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, it, this was a very, very good episode. We get introduced to a new kind of evil group as well that seems to be uh, gonna be, seems like they're gonna be the villains uh, of the season. Uh, so I'm I'm all in. I thought it was great. I'm very much looking forward to more. Kendall, you got to finally check this show out. What what did you think? Yeah, I mean, look, Falcon Winter Soldier is certainly a um, a show that uh, I've had circled. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have had circled. I uh, didn't know what to expect, though. I, mean, I did not uh, expect it to be that much similar to uh, what we got in WandaVision. And it was certainly a different kind of show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously WandaVision, you know, it's, it had similar aspects to the last episode or two of WandaVision in terms of it being very personal right. to Sam and Bucky. And there, it's not a, it's, the first episode was not about connecting and you know, teasing anything crazy. Like, it was just about Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes and their backstory and their future in the MCU. And to me, I mean, I thought it was excellent. I mean, like Smart said, they start you off with the uh, the hyper, hyper jam-packed, you know, action scene uh, with uh, with my guy GSP. Uh, yeah, shout play out. Adesanya. Uh, in the middleweight, <laughs> in the middleweight division, get him to come back. But uh, uh, shout out um, to George the Saint Pierre who played Bob yeah. once again. Yeah, it was great to great to get great to get him back into the MCU. Um, and what was an excellent scene? I mean, it was. I mean, I I have to go back, you know, and watch all these movies again. But um, so far, it might be the best scene in terms of displaying Falcon's abilities, like best Falcon's best action scene in the MCU. Uh, I think it's probably it's definitely his longest. I mean, I know the I know he was in the Winter Soldier yeah. scene at the end where he's doing quite a lot there also. Right. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think this I was, also thought about the uh, first scene in Civil War, which is you know obviously the whole Avengers. Team that's true. Yeah. First scene, work, but, but yeah, yeah, but the yeah. first scene Civil Shorter. War. Shorter. Yes, and you know again it was split up with him and Wanda and Steve, but he got he put in some good work there. But yeah, he he yeah, he did his thing in this first scene. Um, yeah. I agree with that. So yeah, I mean, you know, action. I think is action and and, and emotion are the two uh, are the two two words that I would use to generally describe this this show. Um, before we really dig into some of the some of the details. Yeah, I mean, I think that I agree with you guys. I was really impressed with with this show. I think in many ways I wasn't really at all surprised by anything they gave us. But honestly, that's okay. I think that, you know, this show obviously is very different than WandaVision. I think with WandaVision, like, the whole part of it is about surprise and the whole point of it is about um, kind of what's behind the curtain, so to speak. I think with this show, yeah, there's going to be some maybe government conspiracy and some criminal conspiracy going on. But I don't think that that's a, a large, you know, kind of, you know, what's behind the curtain kind of deal with this show. I think a lot of it is going to be much more straightforward. And I'm cool with that. And I, and I, I didn't, nothing I saw in the first episode was surprising, but it was thoroughly entertaining. I agree. I thought Sam Wilson's first action scene was pretty awesome. Um, I like that. I like the introduction of some of the different new characters. Like I got, I liked uh, First Lieutenant Torres and his uh, introduction into the show. I thought he was a good 
a new person, um, seeing Bucky and kind of how he's adjusting to life, you know, kind of outside of the fight. He's been pardoned now. He's no longer, you know, fighting in the, with the Avengers or anybody like that. So, you know, he's definitely having a bit of adjustment period and seeing him kind of work through that and how he's kind of working through his past, I think it's important. You know, this show, I think like a lot of these shows is in a way, a, a, the purpose is going to be to kind of flush out some of these what we would call side characters. I, we know, obviously, Bucky and, and Sam have been instrumental to the, uh, to the to the Captain America movies, but, you know, they've been supporting characters. So I think what's, what's made WandaVision so great and I think what's going to make this show so great is how it's going to flush out these characters with these side stories. And then when they get introduced or reintroduced into the movies, uh, you'll just have much a much more deep connection to them. Already introducing us to Sam's family, Again, just kind of seeing the the, the the hard work that Bucky is doing, not necessarily do the, the the smartest measures or the most uh uh the, the most up up in the board measures, but nonetheless the measures he's doing trying to make amends for for the life he lived while he was under Hydra's uh, control. And this this is all important. So I, I really dug this episode. I do want to get a lot into it. So this was of course directed by uh, uh Kerry Skolgan, uh, written by Martin Malcolm Spellman. And the story begins, we learn a couple, a couple of really important things. So one, we know Sam right now, his work is pretty much with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, and that he's, uh, and that this is six months after the blip. So he's working with the Air Force, fighting terrorists. So Sam, who has military background, after all the stuff that happened with the blip, goes back to the military. There's no, he, he's known around the world, like he's hanging out with Torres or when he, you know, tried, him and his sister try to get along for their family business. We, we know that people know him as an Avenger to some degree, though the, the, the guy at the Lone Place was kind of having difficulty. First, he thought he played for LSU or something, which I thought was, you know, pretty funny. But, uh, but, but you know, but people know the Avengers, and then he's known as an Avenger, and that is kind of somewhat celebrity status. But uh, what I really dug about this episode was how it kind of explored, like, what is the life of a normal superhero that's not some crazy billionaire? Like, you know, Steve, we you know he his life was very much like, insulated because like shield and other people you know obviously before when the soldier the whole thing fell apart but for a long time shield was kind of really insulating him and protecting him and kind of giving him a life so to speak um and then with tony stark obviously you know a billionaire playboy philanthropist so uh so it was kind of neat to kind of see this perspective of superheroes the other heroes we've had they, we've never really explored them you know thor obviously is a god so you know that doesn't count um you know, hulk is the hulk so he's on the run so this was actually Ant Man's really... the only one that also kind of has a normal. Life. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. Ant Man and uh, uh, what's his name Hawkeye. Yeah, maybe a little bit of Hawkeye. As yeah, well. maybe Hawkeye a little bit. Yeah, but I, I almost feel like with Hawkeye again, like he he kind of has a job. Like he, you know, he's worked for people. So even him, I almost feel like, like he's kind of like Steve in a sense, where he's not as insulated where they give him everything, but he actually has a job, and and we know that you know what his work is. Whereas with Sam and with with, with Bucky, we've seen that, you know, Sam kind of just kind of came in out of nowhere when he came on the scene and went to Soldier. And now that the Avengers are not really a thing right now, um, and that he hasn't been around for five years, how that has stressed him financially. And then seeing Bucky, you know, kind of the life after being uh, in the, the fights with the cape, the, the red cape people, as a, as a Sam's sister said. Um, like, you know, it, I thought that was a, a, a unique thing. We don't normally get to kind of... Uh, talk about or, or look into i think they explored it pretty well in this episode yeah yeah i think that's definitely an interesting uh that was definitely an interesting kind of theme of this episode um you know i mean like it was certainly you know interesting some of the some of the social stuff they tried to put in there when it comes to you know he said the guy assuming that bucky area of falcon had to play for, for like lsu if, he, if I recognize you, I mean, oh, you got it. You had to play for LSU, so, right? So not an athlete. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. You know, I don't know what that means. But, um, you know, and then, like, the idea that he was willing to help. He was willing to, like, get pictures with him, but he wasn't willing to help him, you know, get a loan. You know, like, that kind of thing. Uh, certainly it was interesting how they how they uh, set that up. Um, uh, the Bucky the Bucky stuff is interesting. I'm sure we'll dig into the Bucky stuff. You know, definitely got some, uh, some Oliver Queen vibes. You know, with the list, and you know, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, he was telling people uh, clearly that they failed uh, whatever city they're from. <laughs> uh, yeah, the congresswoman failed uh, failed this city. It is crazy how you have 
I mean, <laughs> I think that there's an interesting social commentary and political commentary in there. But it is crazy that you have like Congress people who are like Hydra people <laughs> who are just like they're just out here, just like they still in office. Or, you know, I guess because there was no, you know, like they 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 weren't arrested or anything, or they weren't you know you know officially tied to them. So I guess there was no, or they weren't you know reprimanded anyway. But they're still out here, you know, doing government business, and and that's that I think that was quite telling. Um. Which Mark, any any, uh, any thoughts on the idea of the the uh, you know the kind of showing the real life of these characters? I think that the one thing that this show also did again, kind of undoing a little bit what Home uh, Far From Home did, similar to WandaVision, was to kind of show, hey man, like these five years were pretty terrible, and like that's a pretty traumatic thing to go through, and uh, I like that this show similar to WandaVision, kind of put back some of the teeth into, like, just how devastating what Thanos did was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I also enjoyed that um, uh, that aspect of the show. Um, you know, I uh, I was going to say, I think the, the Falcon normal life transition and the issue with his family was probably the weak link, I think, of all the plot lines so far. Um, you know, of course, I know it's not going to be all action. So I know it's not just going to be, oh, find the bad guy, beat him up, you know. Where's the shield? Grab the shield. Yeah, get the shield. Why is it in a museum? You know, but but I think so far, I think I, he, I have to see. I think that may be weaved into the story more. I think something's going to happen to them. That always happens. Yeah, that always I think, happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, which, you know, seems to be a little though, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think something's going to happen to them. Zemo's going to find some kind of tactical way to use them. I think something, because... Because you can see how close they are, which I I very much liked about the show is it showed how close Sam is with his family, and I think it makes sense because of all the Avengers, I think he's probably the most normal. Yeah. Him and Hawkeye, I guess. Yeah, I mean, remember he's he the most was normal, just, just a guy. Yeah, I was gonna say, remember he was just a guy that Steve was yeah, all working out in the morning, you know, and yeah, exactly. he had, you know he had this like kind of experimental, uh, he had this kind of experimental, experimental like, technology that he shoot. used while he was in, yeah. when he was in the military, but that was all, you know. Yeah, so I mean, he's probably the most normal of the Avengers so far. So I thought it was pretty cool how they showed how he's adjusting uh, to his normal life. But again, I'm just kind of waiting for that, waiting for uh, everything to come crashing down at some point. So you know what's gonna happen. Kendall, what did you think of Sam's decision to donate the shield to the Smithsonian? We saw when he was kind of getting ready and putting the suit on. And, and him kind of playing that conversation within his head with Tony, which he then, you know, recanted, or not recanted, but he kind of, you know, talked about again when he was with um, uh, Rhodey uh, about feeling like, you know, the, the, the shield didn't, it felt like it belonged to someone else. We knew that he wasn't going to keep the shield because we knew U.S. agent or the, the new Captain America, John Walker, was going to be uh, making an appearance. But, uh, but, but kind of seeing it play out and kind of hearing his emotional and, and physical rationale to what he did. What did you make of it? Um, interesting decision. Uh, not surprising. Like you said, obviously, uh, the U S agent factor, uh, made it likely that he's going to give up the shield. Um, the way they kind of spliced the trailer, it certainly seemed like he was passing it on. Right. It seemed like he's going to keep it. Um, so that part of it is interesting. Uh, I do think I also find it interesting that one of the shots they feature pre- uh, prevalently in these uh, in these promos was him and Bucky kind of practicing with the shield, and you know clearly he doesn't have it, so uh, clearly they get it back on some level. Yeah, I, yeah, they must get it back at some point. And they we we see back. and we see some action shots where he's Falcon and he has the shield. So yeah, right. So we know he's gonna get it back at some yeah. point. We don't know if that's the same shield. It's well, you definitely you definitely assume that it is right now, but I guess we don't know for sure. Yeah. In theory, they could have made a new shield that's not the same. Especially right considering mm-hmm. Bucky's connections in Wakanda, right? Uh, he should be able to get that done. But regardless, um, you know, now it seems like we know that that is something that is happening uh, afterwards uh, or after the, the 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 passing of the shield. And not before it, so it'll be interesting to see how all that played out. But in terms of the decision, interesting but not surprising. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't think it's surprising. Is I don't think it's surprising either. Um, I think it's cool, and I think it, it shows some um, 
I think it shows some kind of a level of a level of maturity from Sam yeah. too. And, he humility, doesn't just, and humility too. Yeah, humility. He's not just gonna be like, okay, so I'll be Captain America now. You know, it's not like, you know, um, you know, it's not like. I don't know. It, it, it's not like other things where the sidekick then just becomes the hero. You know? Right, right. So and, and it wasn't even like him deciding. You know, no one should ever even be near this. Right. Shoot. Like he, he donated it to you know, to honor yeah. Cap in a in a place where in, in theory it would be immortalized and people could see it forever. You know. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I mean, I thought it was pretty mature. Um, you know, we do know that he gets the shield back at some point. Yeah. I'm hoping it doesn't happen until the end of the show, personally. Maybe, like, the next to last episode. or the last. But I feel like that would make it more meaningful. That would make this episode more meaningful, and it would make that It goes both ways. More meaningful. I agree with that sentiment, that it would make it more meaningful. But on the flip side... Because I've heard people throw that out there, too. Like, oh, maybe that, that scene, like, from the last episode, or the second last episode. Like, I personally don't want them showing me anything from the last episode. So, uh, that part would be, like, if this is in the last episode, then why did you show me that in the, in the trailer? So it goes both ways in that regard. Yeah, I think I, I think I side with Kendall. I uh, like, I, in a way, I, I I would get it, but yeah, I, a trailer me showing me him practicing the shield feels a little spoilery considering how the show began. <laughs> you know, like the show began with him immediately, you know, relinquishing it and saying that I this is not mine; it belongs to someone else. So it and would be going weird. to someone else by the end of the first episode. Yeah, and yeah, and having- then you see someone else having a shield that looks exactly the same or maybe the exact shield that he actually donated so it does feel like a little bit of a of a weird decision um one of the things one of the the premier you know themes of the episode an important story after the episode is this introduction to this new terrorist group the, the flag smashers um these are this is a, a extremist group that under the belief that life was actually better in the five years under the blip than when everybody came back and a lot of that was because it it gets similar to a lot of other catastrophic attacks, like, you know, attacks unify people. And, uh, you know, there no longer was this kind of idea of, you know, borders and different governments, because really at that point it's just a matter of survival, because everything, so much has been lost. And now that it rides back, this is a group that, you know, in some ways feels like, you know, this this is actually, the wife was better the other way, and now we're, we're seeing more, actually more division than we did even before the blip happened. What do you just think, Shamari, of that like concept in terms of that being an extremist group? And like to me, I I thought it was neat. I kind of wished instead of seeing a scene where they create commit chaos, I would have actually preferred like Torres been in the scene where he kind of like goes to a meeting. We kind of see, you know, if it's Zemo or someone else go on some like rampage, like some great monologue about like what it was like. Like I kind of was hoping for that. But uh, but cause I think the concept is cool. But we we still kind of would like to see how that that could be explained out. I think we're gonna get there. I think I think it's gonna be. Um, I don't know if Zemo is gonna. I feel like Zemo may have almost like an, almost like an Amon kind of thing with with uh, the Legend of Korra. Mm, what a callback. <laughs> uh, though I, you know I, I don't know if he's gonna be speaking at like in theaters and stuff and giving long winded rants on whatever ideology he may i don't know but i feel like he may have that kind of sentiment a bit where he's the guy behind the scenes pulling the strings on this whole organization meanwhile he has his own uh he's kind of using this ideology to to have but he has his own agenda and what he wants to accomplish so i feel like this may be very similar to that and i think we're i think we're gonna definitely gonna get that um throughout the show but so far i like what i see you know, it's very mass chaos, um, you know, that they're causing. And, and, we see, uh, and we see they got they got superpower people because I do. Yeah, they've got like, they, take they, the crap they, out of Torres. Yeah, it seems like they clearly have some kind of super soldier serum. Yeah, you know, it seems to be some kind of something that they're taking. That's I think Zemo's behind that, too, because he was he went to the base. He saw all the super soldier people. You hear that wasn't just Mark McGuire? <laughs> Mark McGuire, Jesus. <laughs> oh boy, um, but no. I mean, I think it's clearly. I think it's clearly something with, uh, you know, with Zemo. Which I feel like th- there's going to be a lot of explanation that that's going to need to go around a, a, about him and where he's been. Yeah. How he's going to get out? How he got out of wherever he was? I mean, yeah. Because I was going to say, like, I feel like Zemo, like he's been very much promoted for this show, 
but we've oh, actually yeah. seen very little of him. Like, in many yep. ways, he's been kind of the pull for this show is, you know, Zemo returns. And it's like, oh, crap, okay, he's got a mask. You know, he's got the purple mask. And you're like, oh, snap, this is going to be crazy. But in terms of, like, and we've seen promotional shots and, and pictures, but in terms of any kind of trailer or anything, kind of seeing him do anything, it's v- almost none. Like, there's almost nothing. So and then Jeremy Carter. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like, like their insertion is going to be fascinating, but his particular, because you would think that he, you know, this even if this group, and there may be people within this group that they got to face, you know, initially, you feel like overall it's going to come down to a battle between Zemo and, and Falcon and Bucky, you know. We'll see it, whether it's physical or not. We don't expect that, but who knows? I mean, maybe he's been taking the serum and now he can, you know, scrap <laughs> like like uh, like like these guys too. So I guess we'll we'll, we'll figure that out. But yeah, I, I'm wondering how that's gonna play out because we don't know much about his role in this yet. Yeah, I believe uh, Flag Smasher is like a is a Captain America villain in the comics. They mm. they decided that we're gonna, you know. Instead of doing, you know, a flag smasher villain, character. you know, let's make that concept into something that is, uh, you know, more more of a group. I think that's MCU. cool. I mean, that's that's a very um, more modern take on it. Very more modern take because flag smasher, even as a as a character name, is kind of like yeah, exactly. It's kind of cartoon, <laughs> right? Kinda, yeah. You know, you always run into, and probably, I mean, if you go through the comics of any any yeah, any Marvel exactly. villain. Or any Marvel character, like their Rose Gallery, a lot of them are a bunch of outdated. Yeah, you know, and I think that's what Marvel. Uh, I think that's Marvel does a good job of. Like, I, I and I, I think you could say DC does a good job of it too. Like, you know, there are very few characters that have a great Rose Gallery. You know, yeah. you know Batman has a great Rose Gallery. Spider Man has a great Rose Gallery. Flash, uh, Flash, Superman, but the, you know, it, it, you know the X Men, but. Job. <laughs> but like the, the the number is pretty narrow and it's not to say that there still aren't great Captain America comics and Falcon comics but you know when you start to kind of look at okay who are just Captain America villains you know after you get down to the past three or four or five like you know you start to get some bizarre kind of people and when you're making multiple movies it's uh it sometimes can be tricky to say okay we're gonna center our uh, our, our you know whole uh movie around the wrecking crew you know it's just like it's like uh okay like you have to really, you know, put some teeth on those guys to make them feel legit because comics are comics. You know, they are what they are. So, uh, you know, in some ways, we don't like to see them reimagine things like they did with the Mandalorian. I mean, there's another man, uh, the Mandarin. But, like, something with the Flag Smashers, I think that this is a unique take because nobody cares about Flag Smasher as a villain <laughs> right. for, like, the TV show or a movie. But taking something from the comics and, and making it into something that is unique and works within the world you're creating... Now I think it's important, and on really the, the, the part about the blip is interesting to me. I I, I agree with what Mark said about it. the the. I mean, certainly Baron Zemo and you know comparing to him to Amon from Avatar is like. I mean, Kevin Feige could do a lot worse than making Baron <laughs> Zemo into an Amon like character. Right. Uh, great, obviously an excellent villain, but um, you know, in terms of the blip aspect of this, uh, it seems like this show is going to be doing a lot of the, the legwork in explaining the post-blip life in the post-blip world. Um, Which is so weird, because I feel like we've seen Faye talk about how they don't want to be on this for a long time, and yet I feel Right. Like... And that's why I feel like this might be what he was talking about, in that, like, mm-hmm. yes, once we get past Falcon Winter Soldier, you're not going to get a whole lot of, you know, but the blip this and the blip that. Um, and I can understand that, because once you get further along in the story, like, eventually... You know, you can't keep harping back to the blip. You know, at this point, life has gone on. Um, mm-hmm. So I could see it from that perspective. But, uh, you know, I would have liked to have maybe seen a scene where they show these characters, some of these characters getting blipped uh, back into the reality, similar to Monica. Um, I don't know if we're going to get that. We may get that at some point. Uh, but if not, uh, even the concept is, is, is interesting. Uh, obviously, the Flag Smashers. Um, and this idea that the world is better, you know, in the blip, you know, again, sounds very, uh, you know, anarchist, you know, terrorist group kind of mentality. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and to me, uh, I, I like, I ultimately, I want to see, you know, what kind of characters do they show in this? Because obviously we know Aaron Kellyman's character, uh, who obviously was in Star Wars Solo, 
um, played Emphis Ness. Seems like she's going to be pretty prominent in this. She was credited. I think we saw her like for a second in that like raid. Yeah, yeah I think we did. Red hair, uh, but they didn't feature her. And she was in the credits. <laughs> I was like, why is she in the credits? But like Daniel Brule wasn't because he wasn't in the episode. <laughs> um, right. And like Don Cheadle. So they were showing the people in the credits that were actually in the episode. Um, Wyatt Russell, for example, who played U.S. agent. But um, so it, it seems like we're going to get more on more her character. And that's going to be one um, that I'm going to be interested in. But also the the whole post blip thing with the loan, I thought was interesting. And, you know, it's just like, it's a crazy concept. Like, <laughs> the, yeah, the idea I that mean, I mean, it feel like, you know, again, like that what happened created a really unique thing to kind of explore what would happen with the world if that happened and if, if it was reversed like so these like something as simple as like uh you trying to get a loan but you not having a job for five years like how are people supposed to work with that or the idea that a bank could you know reorganize how they work because there's half the people that they, they had before and then all these people come back and they want their loans back they want all their services back and it's like well we we downsize and just like honestly as crazy as it sounds, like we're living in a, a kind of a, a, it feels like a post-apocalyptic world in some degree with the quarantine. Like, I, I, you know, you wonder if, if that's going to, you know, translate to, to life we have right now, you know? So in some ways, it feels almost like a preview of what maybe we will see, where, where certain services that, that won't ever come back or, or getting them maybe more challenging because of, uh, of circumstances. And I think, again, a good job with the social commentary of, like, you know, his sister trying to keep it 100, being like, yeah, it seems like times like this are always harder and more challenging for people like us. And, you know, it, I think it was smart for them to kind of lay it out the way they did because it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, do we know 100% that uh, black people, they're not trying to really give them loans? We don't know that, but we know that's an issue. But we also know that half the resistance was gone for <laughs> for five years and that things have changed and that Sam is not someone who has bread. Um, so it, it just was a lot of different nuances in that scene. That's why I don't know if I'd say it's the, it was the weakest link. I just thought that it was an important conversation or an important, uh, commentary to have in this, like, very superhero-y show. Though, I mean, you could argue that and, and, and a lot of, uh, of Bucky's arc in this episode was also kind of a lot of commentary. One, like, I, I really think it's important to show, uh, uh, the show, like, even though he's doing it through mandated terms of his pardon, I do think that it's, it was cool to see him sit through, like, a, a therapy session and, like, actually kind of display that in, like, a more prominent way. I don't know if we've ever seen that in any Marvel content, in any Marvel property. So I thought that that would just even have this be a big part, and it's important. I think it's, like, it makes sense for his character to go through this. But I think it was important to see that. And then, again, also similar to Wanda... Like this kind of their, you know, their their way of dealing with their demons or their grief, you know, is not always necessarily as healthy. And we'll see if if Bucky, it seems like Bucky is doing it better than Wanda did, but I guess we'll have to see how it all plays out. But there'll be a major difference where you know Wanda was much fresher off her grief and it was only three weeks or a month after the you know they technically after Vision Vision was killed in her head. Because that's the time that uh, expired since she had last, you know, disappeared. With you know, uh, with, with Bucky, we're seeing now six months in advance, uh, and, and him doing this. And any, I, uh, any, uh, any. What? Well, sorry, what were you say? I was going to say I'm fascinated to see like Bucky explore or see the show explore Bucky's uh, kind of family ties. You know, they kind of feel like they teased it. You know, he yeah. got all emotional. Uh, um, at one point in the episode, and uh, kind of left, and you went to talk to the, the uh, to the father. Um, you know, I feel like they're also teasing that you know something with him as well. Um, you know, like because in the end, he was gone for so long. Yeah, know? it's interesting. I mean, he yep. said. I mean, when when he when Nick when uh, the girl who's on a date with asked him about her, his family, you know, he said his parents were dead, but he said it's yep. just he had sisters or had siblings so yeah he didn't say in the past tense and he's 100 years old so that's that was interesting to me i was wondering like okay who are these siblings and what does that mean like are they 
like you know Peggy Carter was in 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 Civil War, where you know, or whatever movie that was, it was Winter Soldier, where you know she was obviously really old and then passed away, or is it, or is uh, you know, was she was his sibling somehow also part of his program or anything like that? Like I, I'm wondering if there will be more to that. I agree that yeah. that that was noteworthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was really interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I, I do like how they're exploring more of of Bucky's. Uh, I think just his mental state, because really since Civil War, we haven't really explored it at all. Um, you know, it's just been okay. Bucky's there. He'll fight when we need him. In Wakanda, yeah, he's, he's in Wakanda. He has a new arm. Now he's fighting in Endgame, and you know, now we're here. So we don't really know what happened to him. Um, so I guess now we're we're gonna really get a deep dive into that. We got that flashback assassinating those people. Yeah, that was, uh, hell which of is a pretty flashback. crazy. To see I was so thrown off. I was just like, wait, is Bucky back doing like old work again? I was but, totally fine with it. I was like, all right, we're back. We're gonna fill the gym. Yeah, <laughs> I was good because like I feel like you know when we talked about it on the podcast, which again we do a weekly podcast. <laughs> uh, no way, I knew it was a flashback. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but I'm I'm with it. Yeah, because on, on the on the podcast we talked about it. We said that you know one of the things we want to see. Or I said it. I said I wanted them to bring yeah. the with the soldier's teeth back because in putting over other characters recently, we we haven't seen him be that beast that he was in Winter Soldier in terms of his fighting ability. So to see him, like I thought maybe those were like you know. Hydra people or evil people that he was taking out, you know. I you know what's going on. Uh, so I was like, oh, maybe he's back doing his work, but like now he's on the good side, quote unquote. Uh, uh, but then I realized, wait, he has long hair here. He didn't have long hair in any of the. And his arm was like the silver, the and he had a star yeah. in it. I'm like, yeah, no, that's, that's got to be old. Bucky. Yeah, and I was like, oh no, yeah, I realized it had to be, it had to be old Bucky. But um, it was still good to, it was still good to see that because man, that guy was a bad dude. He's still a bad dude. That was a good, yeah. very well choreographed scene. It worked out. Uh, really well um any last thoughts on the the kind of you know cliffhanger at the end where uh, the u.s government some government agent comes out no pun intended comes out and is like you know the Ameri- united states of america has determined that you know we need a new hero so here is the new captain america and out runs out john walker what was your uh what would you guys take on, on that and, and, and how that how the episode ended with that? I thought it was a perfect very, ending. Uh, very, very space force uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very like, Really? That's what we did? Um, yeah, no, it was it was cool. Uh, I mean, it was like, cool, but it was it was interesting uh, to see that play out the way it did. Um, you know, obviously we knew it was coming. Uh, we had seen it in the trailer. We have seen it a million times in set photos and things of that nature. So we knew it was coming, but um, you know, it would be interesting. It was interesting to see Sam's reaction. Uh, he seemed like he's yeah, he was know. tight. He was tight. yeah. He was like, oh really? He was yeah, like, yep. Yeah, very disappointed. Um, so it was interesting that we haven't seen we didn't see Bucky's reaction yet. Uh, to 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 that. Um, but to me, uh, it's it's it'll be interesting to see how that how that all plays out. Um, who is who's the the at the head of all of this? Um. Is this uh, John Walker character a super soldier? Uh, I would imagine he is, but uh, there's a lot of different questions uh, in terms yeah. of how this will play out in the MTU. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of different questions. I thought it was a, I thought it was a good reveal to do at the end of this episode. Um, I wasn't expecting that to come at the end of this episode. Yeah, uh, I'll be so eighteen. Last surprise too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, so that was a pleasant surprise. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the ramifications of this are. Um, also, a quick question: Is Steve dead? Because I remember at the end, of, of course, at the end of Endgame, he was old. But I don't believe he's dead. Uh, there is, I believe, someone said that this is a six-month thing since after Endgame. So six yeah. months is a long time for somebody as old okay. as Steve was. But yeah, I don't believe he was dead. But okay. that's uh, yeah, that's a I, I just assume that because again, I think that scene where Torres is like, "What happened to Captain America?" Right. Like, you know, yeah. the move. Right. They they think Captain America is gone. They don't know that he's old. Right. What you call the conspiracy theorists? Like, oh, he's on he's on the moon. Sam's yeah. like he's not on the moon. I know he's like ninety something. Right. You're never gonna recognize. Him. Like yeah. that's that's what I think that was. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I I I I don't think he's old because. I mean, I don't know. I I don't think he's old. I just feel like that would be a weird thing. I mean, excuse me. I don't think he's died. I keep saying he's old. I don't think he's yeah, dead. Uh, I don't think he's dead because I feel like that'd be a weird thing to 
kind of drop onto the audience, you know, episode four or five. Like, oh, by the way, he's dead. It's like, whoa, whoa. That's something maybe I should have known a little earlier. Right. I guess he. we know he came back to this timeline that we're in right now. So we know he's he's out here in the streets, so to speak. But um, but but we don't, But you know, we knew he was really old, but we don't know what happened to him after he gave Sam the shield. Uh, I, I'm going to assume he's still alive, but I feel like what how he is or what he is i feel like we won't know that for a while that actually may be something we get in episode seven or eight or well it was six episodes here so episode five or six maybe where um that'll be something that they kind of reveal later but that's a good question yeah I, I i didn't really think about that aspect i just kept thinking about well we know steve is out living his best life you know in these in the older timelines that he's not creating but but i didn't think about where the current scene mm-hmm. that came back is in the trailers it seemed like when they showed the little bit they showed Zemo, I think there was like an assumption that Zemo may have been working with Sam and, and Bucky. So that's the part where I'm like, you know, I, like is Zemo like the 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 big boss per se, or is I mean he maybe he probably is the big boss on some level, but like what's the initial like thing where he's kind of seems like he's kind of working with them? Why do they even need all need to get together? Like clearly, I would imagine it's something to do with the Flag Smashers, but. Um, it, it's particularly well. I, well, I would I would say you know you never. I mean, again, the blip could have changed a lot, and it could have been a situation where you know maybe he got a deal kind of like Armin Zola got a deal, where right, right, where uh, you know the government says you know look like obviously you're a crazy you know criminal, but we need your services. Maybe so, a certain uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, hey, Bolt. yeah, maybe Ross is like you know what I'm impressed with your I'm impressed with your abilities and. Uh, how about you uh, work for me? And then maybe during this time, he's been he's actually been working with the government, uh, and, and and perhaps that's how they end up coming together. Mm. Just a chance, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely possible. I didn't even I, honestly, I didn't even pick up that he was working with the government. Not the government, but like I feel like there were scenes I, again. Sometimes people like they they show him a little bit, and they just they make leaps. Yeah, uh, they would want want to do Yeah, like I'm not I'm not 100 percent convinced he actually is working with them, but if if he right. was, that's what I could see maybe right. happening. But I feel like they were they were sharing scenes in a way, a couple of scenes, a little bit. I, I could be making all. Of them. I mean, and I and to be honest, I didn't see all the trailers and and, and like right. TV yeah. shots. Yeah, I think so I feel like, like a new one dropped like that. The, yeah, I feel like a new one dropped like yesterday, a couple of days ago. I was like, wait, another yeah. trailer dropped? Like, yeah. So. um yeah, I think some of them made it seem as if they were sharing scenes in a way that's that interesting. Wasn't super confrontational, oh. like yeah, they were. Yeah. They were on the, like clearly they weren't like you know, it was a like buddy cop, yeah, yeah, emo tagging along, but <laughs> right. they were sort of like at, at each other's neck in that very moment. Right, yeah, like, I think I know exactly you know, he was shots. used to them on some level. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I think we've gotten really over over pretty much everything. So I think we should give a final score for this episode. So I'll go first. I'll give this an 8.5. Uh, this was, I thought, a really great start. Um, action-packed, emotional, uh, good commentary, nice way of advancing the story uh, in terms of just what the MCU looks like now, six months after the blip. And it's kind of a different perspective. Because, you know, WandaVision, WandaVision, in many ways, you know, is in its own world. So, like, you, you get some nuggets, especially with the stuff with uh, Monica in terms of how the world is like. But I think, you know, I think I learned probably way more about how the world was like in this episode alone than anything I learned in WandaVision. Uh, you know, WandaVision has some exposition with Hayward, but here, like, say, okay, you know, you know, Torres explaining how, like, again, how the world's kind of worked during those five years, um, the different groups that are now coming up out of the blip because of the fact that everybody's come back. Um, again, the issues with Sam and the financials because of the blip. I just feel like I, I learned uh, a lot, a lot of this. So we didn't, it didn't seem like Bucky really had any stake from being gone for five years, which I guess would kind of make sense. Technically, was no one, <laughs> so uh, yeah. And, and he's and been he's, he's been, been asleep, he's been frozen. Yeah, so, he's a slow frozen in right. Wakanda. He was frozen for twenty years before, so like he, he's been in and out, whatever. So like him being gone five years probably wasn't that big a deal to him. Um, <laughs> and again, he's one hundred and five years old. But but I thought like you know showing that I thought was important. And again, it's kind of seeing these individual characters kind of go through. Uh, their backstories, and, and I thought that that was that was uh, important as we start to try to learn more about what makes Sam and Bucky tick at this point in time. So I dug it all. The action was just killer. It was just really, really spot on. So I thought it was really solid. So I'll go eight point five. 
Um, I'll give it an eight. Uh, I thought it, I thought this was a really solid episode. Not a ten, Jamar. Um, <laughs> Jamar, I think a ten is the first episode. Oh <laughs> boy, yeah, never gonna let that out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I give it an eight. I mean, I thought I thought it was really good. It was very solid. Like EJ said, a lot of action, a lot of good character moments. Um, you know, I know it's gonna ratchet up from here, so I can only go so high. So there's no point in either, right, no right. point in, you know. But um, uh, but yeah, I mean, no real critiques. I mean, there are some storylines that it doesn't seem like I may care as much about, depending on how they go. But for the most part, I'm very sad about that as well. So I give it an eight so far. Yeah, you know, I don't want to fall under the WandaVision trap. I know I was giving WandaVision a lot of low scores initially. I was expecting, oh, I mean, the X-Men are showing up and, you know, all the crazy <laughs> stuff. It never happened, yeah. so <laughs> then I was, just, I was just manufacturing the high grade with you. But um, when it comes to Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'll start this off at an 8. I agree with Shamari. I mean, I feel like we got uh, a lot of the, the a lot of the stuff that we wanted from the show initially in terms of the action, uh, the Falcon backstory, the Bucky backstory. And it looks the first episode. You're not yeah. gonna get. We haven't, even, we haven't gotten Sharon Carter or Zemo yet. We hadn't, you haven't gotten Sharon Carter. You haven't gotten Zemo. You barely got a U.S. agent. You know, Stink Thunderbolt. We're also showing up. <laughs> we haven't seen him yet. Right. Any, any, you know, Mad Report. We haven't seen Mad Report or how that connects into anything. But those are all things that we'll eventually see. Um, but to me, like, what we got in this episode is mostly of what I think this show is gonna be. I don't think there's going to be any speculation about who's the secret cameo, right. you know, in the very last scene of the show, <laughs> like Luke Skywalker. Right. You know, I think we'll, you know, I think what we got is what we're going to see. Um, I think it was good. Uh, you know, again, there is another notch or two that this show could go. Which is why I can't go nine out of ten or ten out of ten. But, um, you know, I, I think that uh, overall this was good for what what they were trying to accomplish. Uh, I agree with all those sentiments, guys. So I want to thank. You guys for obviously for joining me and thank you all for checking out our our first edition of our the winter soldier excuse me the falcon and the winter soldier uh discussion episode recap review show of course if you like this discussion make sure you leave a comment about your thoughts you know do you agree with some of our thoughts or the other thoughts you wanted us to bring up or you want to uh enlighten us to make sure you leave a comment in the comment section we respond to a lot of our, our comments so make sure you guys let us know what you thought of episode one of the falcon and the winter soldier course if you did like this video make sure you give us a like and subscribe to the channel new generation media also make sure again you follow us on uh, our podcast as well you can find us on spotify apple Podcasts, soundcloud stitcher and tune in all for new generation podcast network thank you guys so much for checking this out for kendall for shamari i'm ej take it easy guys peace